Good evening. I'd like to open the meeting of the Deerfield Planning Board, November 6, 2017, at about 7 o'clock at the Deerfield Town Hall. Um, the agenda tonight is to review minutes of previous meetings, review the mail, take some public comment. We have some old business, which is about the solar project up on 901 River Road, uh, and an update on the plans for ideal storage along uh, Route 5 and 10. Then we have some new business and A&R for the Fisher property at 555 River Road. Uh, we'll hear about the MVP grant. Uh, and we have a letter from the University of Massachusetts about that. And I hope our town administrator will be here for that part of the meeting. And then we'll, uh, we need to talk about our schedule for FY19, including our meetings and our budget. And the other items, we'll discuss staffing needs of the planning board, uh, housing, the affordable senior housing, if anything going on there, and any other business not reasonably anticipated 48 hours prior to the posting of this meeting. We'll set a date for the next meeting and adjourn. Any additions, comments about the agenda? No. Nope. So, do we have a, um, the minutes from the last meeting? Uh, we have a quorum. Paul, Roger, uh, Kip. John and John are here. Rachel sent me an email last week saying she's going to be out of town. Um, yeah, I ended up working out of town last month, last minute. That's uh... So we have minutes from the October 2nd. You all right there? Yes. What's that? The minutes from the October meeting? I'll read them, but I can't vote. Uh, Paul DeYoung? Uh, or maybe I, I have them already. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I have them already. Uh, Wow, that's a pretty smooth meeting, huh? Yep. Yeah. Yes. Any motion? I make a motion that we approve the minutes of October 2nd, 2017. I second. All those uh, uh, in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Abstain. Roger and John are here. So, 302. Excellent. Is there any public comment? It's not going to be discussed tonight. It looks like we don't have any people from the public, so we'll go past that. We'll save the mail to the end. I keep asking her to put that at the end. Mm. Do you, um, are you here for a A&R? The A&R, yes. Uh, Fisher, 50, 555 River Road? Yes. All right. What if we do that one first? Fine. Um, because they're actually these other ones, I, I wouldn't mind waiting for um, Wendy. I think she must be in one of these other meetings. I think she might come out. She was in the personnel meeting, but I think so. Yeah, so. All right, but if it's all right with everybody, we'll look at the ADR. Fine with me, sure. rather than have him sit for. I know he wants to hear about the ideal storage and everything else, probably. All right, um, so I have a application. Michael Fisher. Um, And the parcel is uh, 555 River Road, it's map 66, lot 2, it's RA district. Um, there's one parcel, he wants to make it into three, so create lots one and two out of a larger parcel. Um, he 
he's paid. Uh, actually, we're supposed to get a check tonight because they, they I should give you a check for two hundred dollars. Yeah, they weren't sure the other day. I'll get the signed by lot to take you. Yep. Because the application fee is $100 and the, every new lot is $50. So. You have those you can pass around, John? Yeah, I'm so. just checking to make sure that we got the, uh, this was uh, stamped and everything. So. And we got the, we have the disc. Give us a little rundown of what you're doing. You can sometimes it's easier to just point at that. You're Michael. I am Michael. Thank you. Um, sometimes they're more straightforward than others. This one looks pretty straightforward. So we're on River Road. We're on River Road, about halfway between the Sunderland Bridge and the Deerfield River Bridge. Alan Smith right. lives here. So this is so the so the river the uh, river can I search so you're on the other side right okay. this is APR land oh okay so, all right so we've got the this whole thing and you want to make and the farm old farmhouses here and we're keeping a large pot for now mm -hmm. that and running with those two lots so the new lines would be this one and this one. yep that's and that exists the it? official survey from the Warner. So it looks like our frontage is good everywhere. More than adequate. 255? Mm -hmm. 255, so you just equal. And that's more than <laughs> is it an acre and a half or something? 60,000 <laughs> square feet? So. The region, I think. Yeah. 7.7 zero. This is the total for lot two is 34. Okay. Well, and Alan Chase Foundation surrounds you. Huh? On two sides. On two sides. <laughs> That's the hill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it goes up to the road. All right, we have a good locus, and it says that um, an endorsement of the A&R plan does not certify that the lot shown on the plan qualifies building lots. So that's a whole other thing. I mean, they probably will, but we don't, we're not signing to that. Mm -hmm. Any questions? None. Mm -hmm. I'd like to make a motion to... Um, and endorse the plan as submitted. I'll second the motion. Any comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, oppose? Abstain? Nice. If it's important to you, I do have, I'm one of the owners, my brother and his children, other owners, I do have signed signature papers for the ANR application for all of us. <coughs> <them. coughs> it matters to Bless you. Thank you. So, are you saying this is in an APR? No. Oh. I said I have I have signature pages for all the owners. Oh, I see. If it matters to you. I've had this done before and nobody cares. But all entities listed on deed must sign, so yeah, I guess we got to get give me the, I guess we got to get their signatures. Please. That didn't, didn't get picked up in the, uh, in the office. So, it's 11, 6, so we add these two pages. Oh, good. The Excellent. Right. They're out of town, actually. Yeah. yeah. All right, and then um, okay. and then two hundred dollars. Yeah. No, I didn't uh, know where, what line you picked, so. You just did the town of Deerfield, like, yes. wall check?
You don't have to tell us, but should we look for these for uh, going on sale soon? Or? Uh, they're on sale. Oh, okay. Yeah. I spent a year and a half working with the Franklin Land Trust trying to conserve the whole farm. Oh, good. But they were so busy fighting the oil pipeline, they didn't work very hard oh, on my project. At least that's my theory. Oh, that's a so shame. I had to give up on that, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, that's too bad. I tried with them too. You can still do it on some of your property, though. Hmm? You think you'll still try it on your property? What to get get it uh, in the land trust? Or? Well, the, 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 the important property on the that the borders the river is in an APR. Oh, so. okay. that, that's the really valuable piece. Yeah. And none of this was in any other chapter. 61 or anything, was it? It was, but all of that's been resolved. Oh, okay. Kip knows he was here when I did some of that. All right. We'll give you a mylar and one of our signed copies. And, uh, Thank you. Three is all we It was painless, wasn't it? That was good. Well, Dan finally did it. I just saw him at the gym earlier. I was wondering why he's not here, but he did such a good job, I guess. Dan Warner didn't need to come. Yeah. Bring him in when uh, <laughs> his questions. I've been spending time in Deerfield before the candy kitchen existed. <laughs> well, right. It's a benchmark, I suppose. When did that open? I don't know. Well, well since I, I always remember forever. the candy kitchen, so that's... It's going to be there 60 be. years. Yeah. yeah I, think, I think I was the fifth customer after the open house. Seriously. <laughs> Been a customer ever since. All right, thank you so much. Have a great night. Right, have a good night. Good night. Nice. Have a good meeting. So the solar project, I think I actually put that on there because I think everybody was informed there was a conservation commission scheduled a meeting. Uh, well, the applicant asked the conservation commission to um, to come look at the site and declare that it was that they'd done everything they were supposed to do uh, for those solar panels up on River Road by, behind you know the Warner property there. And so I, I went up there uh, uh, with Steve Barrett and uh, another member of the CONCOM. This is the True Stone one? Yeah, I still call it Warner Brothers, but it's called True Stone. Yeah, yeah. so I'll be recusing any. Yeah, this is just an yeah. update. This isn't oh, okay. I'm not going to vote on anything. It's, uh, so, and I think I've mentioned this in the past, but basically almost every week I'm, I'm on an email list as some of you are, I think. It's called the Deerfield Solar Construction Status Inspection Storm Report. And so Ryan Joyce, who's the inspector who's working, submitted, he submits this to the Deerfield CONCOM Conservation Commission. And he gives us pictures of what the site looks like, how the grasses are coming along and what erosion is happening and what erosion controls they have. And he, he writes a little paragraph and he tells us what actions have been taken. Um, so for the most part, it was going pretty well. There was a lot of times during the early stages when, it, when, it, when there was a storm and there was runoff that sometimes water was going over some of the barriers and you would ask them to fix it and there would be a little washout. But that was when they were doing construction. Now, now they've finished construction, all the panels are up. Um, it, it's not live yet, they haven't plugged it in yet, or whatever you call that, but it's, it's, they're not gonna do any more construction and uh, the grasses have taken hold and uh, the, the ponds are there, the basins are there where they're supposed to be and it, it looked pretty good. So um, so I think the CONCOM either they're 
maybe they had a meeting in the past week or two, I don't know, but they were probably going to say that it's done and so they can uh, move forward with the next step. I, I, I was going to ask our uh, building inspector what we put some conditions on this also, but basically I think our conditions followed the CONCOM because we had nothing, really no separate planning board issues. Um, we know. just had some screening off of Keats Road, right? Yep, there was uh, some screening, and, they, and uh, I can tell you from being, you know, living up in that area that it, you don't know it's there. You don't hear the electrons moving. You don't hear them. You know, they <laughs> Why is your hair sticking straight up? They, uh, yeah, yeah. They haven't, you know, turned on the inverters yet, but it basically, in the way he said it, is they only, they, they make very little noise, and the only noise they make is when the sun's out. So it's not when you're sleeping. <laughs> um, there is some... There is some trees still on the Keats roadside, so you really can't see it. And uh, they have chain link fence around the whole thing. So the uh, Pocumtuck Ridge Blue Dot Trail had to be diverted because it went right through there. And I don't know actually what's going on with that, but that was going across private property, so it's not a lot to do about that anyway. Um, so so it it's, uh, seems pretty good. The escrow we had talked about, I don't know, I forget. Do you remember if we asked for something or not? I want to double check that. <laughs> I think we're also going to do a pilot project on it. Right? Yeah, I don't think I don't think that we did. I think that the yeah. pilot uh, program is in place yeah. and ready yeah. to go. So we're getting the taxes from them. And, you yep. Know. And you know, again, most people say that at the end of the day, if they do turn this thing off, scrap metal people are going to want it. So it's not going to be sitting there forever. Right. You know, it's kind of worth something anyway. So. So that's really all. Oh, my pen. Oh. Yeah. Am I keeping you up? You didn't think it was my, my tongue making the noise in the back? No. It wasn't the solar panels, right? So um, so that's really all I wanted to give is an update. You know, we spent a lot of time on that project. And, uh, you know, from, from my point of view, it's, uh, you know, I think it's, it's, it's what it is. You know, they, they took down some trees. I know some people didn't like, but it's John kind of, says it's okay. It's, it's what it is. It's, I didn't say it was okay. I said it is what it is. And hopefully... Uh, I don't know if the town of Deerfield ended up getting in on on buying any of that electricity. We did. You, you did. Yeah. We are. We done. So that's a good thing. I know Amherst was gonna was one of their first uh, takers, I think. With the discount that we get off of our already uh, discounted um, electric rate, I think that we're going to save about we're going to save twelve percent on twenty percent of our power. If that makes sense. Right. Yeah, we, we know every the counts. So okay. Yep. And then we also get taxes from it, property taxes. So, uh, well, or, or the pilot, we get a payment. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And I believe that was just shy of seventy thousand dollars a year. Yeah. Yep. So you know, some good things came of it, and hopefully, we're going <coughs> to save some fossil fuels. So, so that's my update on that. If you have any questions, or you know, follow up with the concom too. Uh, the other update is uh, Ideal Storage um, has a couple uh, changes to their uh, plans, um, but no one is here from there. So let's see if it's self-explanatory. Actually, I'm going to see if you notice anything on there. Let me look in here if there's any paperwork about it. On what page? Well, that's a good question. Um, Unless I had something to compare it to, I really wouldn't know if there was anything different. As agreed by engineer, updated plans. So I'm not sure if it, if if I I'm wondering if it's what we voted on. He was going to add something. And we still we said yes. Just send us the updated plans when you get them. That's that kind of sounds a little familiar to me. Let me let's see if we got any minutes on that. Do we have a? Uh, should have been probably two or three months ago. You think we approved it? Well, if you open it up, it's probably a stamp in the lower right corner somewhere. There's no cover letter or anything to 
say what was the system updated. a little grading, but it's fairly flat. I think as I remember it, there's no there's no uh, All right, so we approved it on um, August 15th. These these updated plans say October tenth. Oh, okay. So that's so there there was some update because the last one uh, was August fifteenth. We don't know what it was. Um, here it looks like photometric dia diagram was missing. So Pat Smith helped us with this, and this. So I have this final report. So I'll send this. I'll, I'll make sure she gets a copy of this, and it, it, it's one of the updates we expected that we would be getting. Were those the August fifteenth? Were those the minutes we don't have yet? This little still has a drive-in theater there. Has the one drive-in theater? <laughs> What's playing? Wow, that's a long time. I remember as a kid, my folks took us to a movie that I was a kid movie, Freebie and the Bean. I don't even remember what it was about, but I guess it was not a kid's movie. <laughs> I actually remember seeing that there, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we'll, we'll go back and just double check it. But yeah, I don't see the minutes to the office. Yeah, I think those are the ones we don't have. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, so I'll we'll follow up on that. Sorry if I roll them up. Yep. Hi, Wendy. Oh, beautiful, perfect timing. So, we got a, uh, this is the, under new business MVP grant, but we got a letter from UMass, and we want to have a discussion <coughs> with our town administrator, and there she is, Wendy Foxman, how are you? Okay. Now I've sent you information. I sent all of you an, an email about this grant. So I think we're good. I'm looking for signs of recognition. <laughs> okay. I, I, read. Okay. I, I have read it. And you've heard about it. You've heard the discussion at the select board meetings as well. So the reason why you got the letter from UMass is because this uh, pr program, the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Program, um, was modeled after another state's program to engage the public in this planning activity um, and core people within town government. That's 
uh, to address vulnerabilities, most environmental and, and vulnerabilities. A lot of that work, we, the town has done, and I think I said that in my email. Um, there were all hazards planning and other actions. Um, uh, they, the money they awarded, $15,000 to us, I think both um, Conway and Ashfield were awarded $10,000, and there's some other communities. I think there were 67 across the state. Um, we were debating about whether to apply because we have done so much work. We're sort of ahead of the curve on a lot of the work that they're asking for to be done here. So, but what we really like is the certification that comes at the end of the process, which would put us in a, a, um, a good position to get awards to do some of the work um, like culverts and other things that, you know, would be a mitigation activities against problems. Um, so, but what we don't have is um, integrating the climate data and that some of that information is new and we'll be getting that from the state. But the reason why you got the email is that part of this project, part of what the state has done is um, train uh, basically anybody who's a planner or who is interested, met, met a couple of um, benchmarks, but they trained, I don't know how many people, 200 organizations and people across the street, and that I've been getting bombarded with, and that's what you got from UMass. Mm -hmm. I might have heard from them as well. Um, from entities that want to be the facilitator, work with the town. FERCOG wanted to work with us. Um, but we were approached by Chris Curtis, who Carolyn knows and I know, I don't know if any of you know, who lives here in town, so here for a while, and I know him over decades. He was the senior planner at Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, and he works with some other local people um, who you might know. Um, Pete Westover does a lot of work with farms, and. Anyway, he retired as a longtime conservation um, agent for the town of Amherst. Anyway, they were good. I, we thought they were a good match. We being me and Carolyn, who's who was most interested in this. So um, we're working with them, and we'll roll out something in terms of a meeting with um, whoever's interested. Actually, I mean, we we'll, we have to have sort of a core group of designated people. Um, like the fire chief, the fire chiefs, um, mm -hmm. um, public works superintendent, those that are that tend to these kinds of things. So um, I don't know what else to tell you, Ryan. I think we were looking at a date of January 24th for a uh, all-day meeting, but I will know more as we continue the conversation with the consultant who will be designing that. Um, I'll ask. I'll answer questions if you have them. I still have some as well, but I'll do my best. So, is, I guess one thing is: is there any particular role for the planning board in this? I mean, it sounds like it's a planning activity, so it's, um, right. we, sh we know about it. Right. Is there anything we can do at um, our meetings or? Well, I think attend, and I think as we start looking at the data. Um, just I'll, cont I'll keep you in the communication loop and you can choose to participate either as individuals or if you see that there's a role for you to play um, at a particular, you know, around a particular topic. Um, so, um, there, you know, it sounds like something it would be on your plate and, um, you know, I think that depends on the board itself and how much you want to be involved in things beyond, you know, the kind of things the planning boards have to be involved with. Yeah, so. I mean, I guess one thing is if, if there are, if out of this comes any recommendations about changing bylaws and things like that, I mean, obviously, yes. you know, when you talk about mm -hmm. water issues, we deal with water issues all the time, so um, if that comes up. But I think I mentioned an email to you is that if this could be the kind of thing we could just have on our agenda and just to update the public ourselves and the public since I don't know how many boards and committees are on television but you know just because it is it's a good way to get the public because a lot of people aren't going to come to these meetings right. right we know that but it's good to mm -hmm. update people that these things are going on because if there was some kind mm -hmm. of flood or problem people say hey have you been doing anything about it and we could say yes well if you would like to designate somebody as the representative from the planning board to this project um, that might be a way to go. 
if you know more, more about it, you could, you could do it, John. <laughs> well, I'm not, I'm not. Max or Rachel. She's not here, so it might as well that's be. That's Max or Rachel, exactly. <laughs> Max or Rachel. <laughs> well, I guess that's what I'm avoiding and saying that we need a, a designee, just updates. Yeah. And we, how to get those updates is one of the things we need to figure out in town, I think, is okay. it's kind of hit or miss. But that comes to maybe one of our next I, points. I will which is make a note to make sure that you are informed as things yeah. proceed every step of the way. And, and just even CC the, a couple of us on the emails, and then I can just read an email or two at a, at a meeting occasionally, I think just to keep people up to date. Okay. And then my other quick question is how you select consultants. Is that all? Was there any requirements? They on gave us a whole list of people. And we were, I was approached by others, and Chris was about the first person, and um, Carolyn knew, and she got, we both were excited about working with Chris. Right, I'm, I'm just yeah. not sure if there's any formal, you need three quotes, you gotta no, interview no, the no. lowest bidder, any, any Anything where the, yeah. you're working with, um, uh, and this is a good example, you got a state grant, they pre-qualify people, and oh, they okay. say, these are the people you oh. have to work with. You get your choice. And, and FERCOG really wanted to work with us. Yeah. And I had long conversations with them about um, wanting to continue the all hazards planning with them and integrating that in. But they were trying to make it um, cost effective for those really small towns that have no resources to utilize their. It's a long story, but it, we didn't need to do that. So we thought it might be useful to use multiple. Uh, consulting sources, the FERCOG and yeah. the folks with the conservation works group. So, right, cool. any other questions about that? Thanks. Well, you're <laughs> sitting here. Yes. Can we talk about the proposed job? Discuss staffing needs of the planning board, which we have discussed, and yep. we're, we're told we're going to move forward. And now you've made some great progress. So, you know, Update us on that. Okay. Well, I did talk. Um, I don't know if I had. A, I don't believe I had a proposed job description in front of you last time. I happened to be in the building, and you asked me to talk about stuff. Yeah. Um, so I talked about that. There seems to be a lot of interest. I've yet to encounter anyone who doesn't think this is a good idea to create a part-time position. That's the, the hour is yet to be determined of a, a planning and economic development director. Um, to both sort of two pieces of the job are providing expert technical assistance um, and administrative as well to our land use boards and integrating the work among the boards and enforcement staff and health, um, board of health and health agent as well. Um, DDIC um, has an interest also in, in working with having someone to work with as well. Um, and the other pieces to work on economic development activities. I have a whole lot of projects on my plate that would I see as would be ideal kinds of things for this position to handle. I'm very interested in those, I'm very supportive of those, but there's only one of me. And um, I would love to have a partner to work with on these things so we can move things forward. We have a lot of things that town has been talking about, plans, big events, engaging lots of people, and then implementation doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. It would be nice to take a lot of ideas, a lot of effort people have put into thinking about things and moving them forward. So I think this, this would be helpful. And the goal of the other integrated goal of this is to create uh, economic development opportunities mm -hmm. to grow the tax base and diversify it and reduce the tax burden on the residential sector of the community. Um, that's, those are grandiose plans, but I think they can be accomplished. Um, and do things in an integrated way and, you know, have, have Deerfield have better partnerships with other agencies such as yours and the state agencies, et cetera, for bringing in grant funds and other kinds of resources. Moving the housing issues along as well, not just, uh, you know, um, commercial and industrial development, but housing as well. So there's a, did, I think the email, um, I think everybody got the, job, the draft job description email to them. There's a copy here. Um, so in summary, the this person would, um, 
would do administrative and technical work to create, prioritize, implement, and supervise community development, regulatory, and planning activities for the town, all other related work as required, and report to the town administrator. So one question we've had here is what would there be their more, you know, direct connection to us, the planning board? Um, would they help prepare the meet for the meetings, take, be responsible for minutes even? Um, I think that's to be worked out, that piece. I think it, it depends on how many hours there, yeah. there are, but then we'd have a professional staff person to make sure that we were doing things professionally. So yes, it would get worked out. So that's one thing is just, I know we could use help just preparing, so we're efficient when we're here, and then following up with minutes, even if they are not here to take the minutes, I think as long as they were available well, afterwards. I don't think help. their goal is not gonna be with that type of resource. It's gonna be more of Joe Smith comes out of the woodwork and he wants to put in a housing plan, um, the development. This person will guide the applicant yeah. through the process, so it isn't this one first, that one second, and uh, it's going to, they're going to be more of a directive to all of the boards as well. Um, so, you know, I know that with my tenure on this board, it's been, well, should we do something or do we got to hear from con comment? Mm -hmm. And it's to eliminate all of that and to go forward. And so instead of having an applicant deal with their engineer, a town's engineer, Pat Smith, this person can coordinate everything and bring it to the planning board and say, this is it. They've met this, this, and this. Now it's up to you guys to do your job first. And I think it would be beneficial to both, you know, this board and other boards, but also the applicants and the community as a whole. And it takes a lot of the guesswork out because it, there doesn't, there's never been any one person that steps up and says, you know, this is okay here and it's okay here and it's not okay there. So, you know, I, I think that would be, and that's why I liked her job description is that. You know, we're not just going to hire Uncle Joe because he needs a job. No, you this know. has got to be professional. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, my Uncle Joe is quite interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you see any comment, I, I sent back some just some quick yes, editing comments. Yes, I've integrated and that. Priscilla, yeah. I know Priscilla looked at it too. Yeah. So, um, so that's terrific. And work. actually, what happened is the the you know when I do this late night emailing. I'm exhausted, and I said, oh, that wasn't the one I meant to send. <laughs> so some of the comments that you sent uh, were, already were yeah. I figured. Like, it's not the town of Sandwich, where <laughs> so. Yeah. And, and just to clarify, we had talked about this. To pay for this is a, um, you know, I think we'll see savings in some ways are right away. Um, that potentially some of it comes from the FERCOT contract that we might not right. have to hire out. We might not need that it's technical true. review yes. right away. And I've already and talked then about this. And hopefully it increases the tax base and brings in more um, Right. And if DDIC wants to yeah. share this in some small way, there yeah. will be some contribution yeah. there. So I don't think it's a, uh, it's a money issue. I think it can really help the town and not... Yeah, I think, that, yeah. The, I think Kip said it well, but just to add to that, I think the goal or the the duties for this person will enhance your effectiveness as volunteers. Yes. And so you will have that resource available to you and you can just make those policy decisions. And it's true because we are volunteers and that a lot of times you know, you've got to kind of really scratch your head and think about things where it'd be nice to have somebody that we know is on the community side to say, yes, this is the way it is. You know? And, and take that burden off of us. Mm -hmm. So we'll have them read these things first and then. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks. So that's the timeline is just put this out there for soon? Um, I, we need to talk about that more, I think, in, in the, at the select board finance committee level. This is something we want to do, try to make happen before annual town meeting or special town meeting. It's somewhat. Uh, moved along because of the um, building commissioner's transition oh, to right. uh, health agent because for quite a while now um, Dick Halashevsky has been the main point person for businesses, others coming, you know, interested in town um, and he has the familiarity. Um, the other, the assistant building commissioner who will be moving into that position 
uh, knows a lot, but um, not as fully acquainted in, uh, with the town and you know all of that. Of course, a new person in, the, in this position will have to learn. Yeah. But at least they will have um, the skills as a trained planner to having had experience elsewhere, kind of know how things get done. And then learning how Deerfield does them and integrate all of that. Good. We look forward to that. Can we um, keep, you, <laughs> keep you here for another couple minutes? We're going in. We're going to talk about our budget items for, um, oh. which yeah. I think. Um, well, actually, this is this is very well in advance, right? This is further ahead than I think we usually get emails about budgeting. But just to remind people. Um, we requested a lot less this past year because we had not used some of the other and because we have the revolving mm -hmm. fee account. And so I just got a um, planning board for this fiscal year. We've expended 3,800 out of the 75. I think that's what. We're still in we're still in seventeen, right? Um, no, we're in eighteen. No, we're in 18. Yeah, we're in eighteen. Um, that's that's the budget. That doesn't even have our all right, so actually that's what maybe I can ask for next is what we have. I thought this had what we didn't spend. I think this is just the budget. And that's primarily going to FERCOT or ads and yeah, planner services five thousand on it. Okay. Yeah, because most of the other things come out of the fees and stuff. So, so anyway, I, at this point, I'm sure we're going to be able to keep our budget request very low. But I'll, I'll get an update on what it is. You know, there's mail and a few other things, but mm -hmm. there's not a lot. Who's had? It's been, do, do the first few in? months have been a lot slower than your last mm -hmm. previous. Well, season. that's that's true too. But a lot of that was paid for by the right, applicants. The, right. You know, any kind of those technical reviews get paid for by the applicants. I'm really, I'm also hoping, and I'm a big proponent of this, as you know, um, that we will, the planner will also help to provide more training, um, yeah. and updating our boards and committees with what you need to know to make the right decision. So I'm um, warning you now. <laughs> you might not, ha you might have to, you might be, ex you will be expected to come to meetings beyond just meetings where you've got an, uh, an application. Uh, you know, most boards, in, at least the boards that I've worked with in other communities meet when you don't have that kind of business, mm -hmm. you know, just to talk about, you know, where are we going? We want to take a look at this bylaw. Um, have a speaker come in, and we've had a number of issues with this, why don't we? We could host one of the citizen planner trainings here. Um, FERCOC has one coming up, or they just had one. Um, we actually talked about that last meeting, and some of them, people might go to some of them, I think. I'm not sure we did, though. They have one coming up in, uh, in Greenfield. Right, right. I think it's, uh, wasn't it? Zoning bylaws, yeah. Rules, yeah, rights and responsibilities, or something like that. It's both for planning boards and CBAs. It's a good one. It's a good refresher course. Oh yeah. All right. Thank you. Anything you want, else for us? Do you want me to see if I have the updated report or your? No. And again, this is we're okay. way ahead of time. I think so. Next meeting, I'm sure we'll be fine to get our. Not too spent. far ahead. Too. We're going to be looking at the budget in December, anyways. So. Initial budget submissions are due no later than December 22nd. So let's get this on our agenda for next for December, first week of December. Yeah. And I'll have, I'll get, uh, you know, how much we have spent this year to help us plan for next year. Wendy, what is your time frame for bringing on this? Well, I was just going to, John asked me that, and I said, uh, you know, I'm kind of looking for direction. We haven't talked about it at the board very much, and as I said, it's somewhat fueled a little bit by Dick's transition, as um, frankly, the sooner we could do it, I think it would be great. 
but I turn to you all to express your interest in that. And well, my interest is quite strong. And, you know, I know that Carol and Trevor and I have, have all, you know, spoken to you about this and that, you know, we, we want to go forward with it. I mean, it's not a, a, a rush, rush thing. We don't have to hire somebody next month, but it'd be good to get that ad out there, or let it be known that we're looking and mm -hmm. we could start you know, interviewing people. And, but I, I think that is, is, um, important as it is to have a, a planner to help this, they have to be a good match for our community exactly. too. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, there's a lot of people that do a variety of different things, but you know, if, if an individual isn't a good match for our community, and you know, it could be a problem, okay. you know. Well, I think about that every hire we do yeah, here in town. Sure. Um, so the really, I think the question, it, we had personnel earlier and they have it to look at as well. It would have to go through them to approve the, you know, to, to look at and recommend to the select board the job description, the, the grade level and the compensation plan, that kind of thing. So, um, but the, we don't know when we're gonna have a special town meeting. We've been looking at maybe February, if, or maybe it'll be April at the annual town meeting that we do this, but that's, in terms of answering your question, that could be a timeline if, people felt like they wanted to move that along more quickly. So it right. has to go to town meeting? Um, funding, we don't have funding for it, so we need to appropriate money. It's not unnecessary or unforeseen. Well, maybe it is. <laughs> well, I so what we can't, it, it does not make sense to any other way to fund this, but to have to go to town meeting yeah. for it. What, do you have another idea? I, I'm willing to hear it. <laughs> well, I thought if we say we're saving money here and there, and we're gonna bring in money if it doesn't quite work it out. Yeah, work. It's not a not enough. Yeah, well, I guess the I mean, reason we can I still say that. Well, definitely, if if you know, we if we're looking to spend, you know, say fifty thousand dollars, but on the planning board, it's, and we're going to save eight thousand dollars, and on you know uh, yeah. town, um, you know, other office area, we're going right. to save five or six thousand, and from the building department, we're going to save five or six thousand. So you know, we might not have to come up with. An additional fifty thousand at town meeting it might only have to be thirty thousand because right. the other money is going to come from other areas. Yeah, but you still have to. Well, still looking at number there. seven on the agenda, you know, affordable senior housing. I mean, how many years have we ta talked about this? And it probably never will happen without well, the help it, from a planner. You need someone to make it. So that that's, that's yeah. it's it. But this is. Um, I feel this is why I feel it's real strong strongly to get the right person because you can't just have a planner and an economic developer without having that person sensitive to the rural community that we all love and share. And, uh, you know, they could do a, a bang up job about attracting all this and we're like, wait, 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 you know, we don't, this isn't what we want, you know, this isn't what the, you know, so that's why it has to be a very, I don't know, I, I just think it has to be the right person. No, I understand. It's a difficult I thing. Agree. Uh, and as far as the, the affordable housing goes, you know, I I still think the town is a, I, I don't even know, when I say the town, I don't know, who do I mean? But this is never, almost never going to happen, Deerfield doing it on their own. They're going to have to have a partner of some sort. They're going to have to, you know, either have a private developer or some sort of a, a state agency. I don't know, what is the Franklin County Regional Housing Authority? Is that an, a Quasi state agency or something like that. It's a regional you know, housing authority. <laughs> housing authority. That's the type of group or, or private individual that we're going to need because the town of Deerfield will never be able to do it. But that's you know? but that is what but, a planner would. Right. Do. I'm trying planner, to do this now. Right. Right. Like I spent the point. Th three right. hours with someone from Mass Development, and they have many many programs that we sure. could be interesting and take advantage yeah. of them. I walked around, showed them. Well, we're thinking of doing this here and housing there and to downtown and blah, blah, blah. And that is what this person would do, yeah. is pull those resources together. It wouldn't necessarily be the town creating the housing, but at least they would know, you know, to, where, how to find a developer or get someone interested or, you know, where the resources the are to make it affordable and, you know, make it affordable for a developer to develop it, okay. um, whether that be a, a, an agency or a private developer. But yes, I don't think yeah. we're the town is interested in becoming um, a good you know, example having our own housing authority. Let me just this past week, Greenfield 
yes. little ground, and, and it was right. Greenfield's property, the town's property, that they, I think, just have a developer doing seven units, you know, mm -hmm. it's just, so you can, but it took a lot of planning, and they have a planning department that well, helped we, do that. So. I, I, I think, uh, I gotta be frank, I think that if, even if that happened, if a guy came in and wanted to put in seven, you know, low-income, you know, buildings that had four to six units, he would have a difficult time with this board. And, and that's, we have to, I don't know how, if it's, we have to adjust our mindset or just relinquish the fact that if, if we want this, we're going to have to change our ways. Am I being clear enough? I know I, I'm trying to be, not try to be vague, but, you know, <laughs> I, I guess this is where I've never un clearly understood what, what it is you think. We have bylaws, and if someone comes in and wants to follow the bylaws and build something, we, we approve it, which we've done over and over again. I know. I know. But the most mean, recently, housing development that w went through, did go through, it was, it was quite painstaking, you know, and, um, you know and, and that was following all the rules. So if somebody wanted to come in and say, if they just say, look, it, this isn't going to work with two. I need to put six units in every building. You know, well, it doesn't follow our rules, so you can't, you know, that's what I'm saying. We have to be flexible, and we have to think about it consciously beforehand to say, okay, you know, where can we mm -hmm. change and amend things without opening up the whole town, you know? Right. And then on the, the flip side of that, we have to be quite fair to any and all comers. You know, you just can't say, all right, I'm going to let this guy do it over here because we don't care about that parcel of land where you know, somebody on the other side of town might have something that is better, you know, so when you, you pick and choose where you can do stuff, I mean... Well, I, and that's what zoning does. Well, it, it, right, but when you talk about residential, you know, it's kind of like the whole town is really residential. So, you know, some areas might be more practical for senior housing than other locations. I, I, I for one, think any, anything close to downtown it makes it very, you know, inviting for elderly people because they can walk to stores. Uh, you know, they, there's a lot more sidewalks and things for them to, you know, just walk on. Not that great. Church and well, they can trip over. Mm -hmm. them. That's, yeah. not, that's high on the list. What's that? So, it's high on the list to get the especially yeah, they're on terrible. The if you're walking on blood. Oh, the so we talked center. about affordable housing. That's it. Check so then we, we checked it out. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Good. Well, that's but that's thing. that's the only point I was trying yeah. to make is this person. Gonna help this per yeah. Yes, yes, exactly. That's exactly that's the only thing. I also see that the person reading through all our, you know, related bylaws and regulations and identifying and hearing from you all, yeah. you know, and yeah. as well as the building department, where the and the and ZB at whatever concom, um, where have there been problems, you know, that um, they're need they need to be loosened up or tightened up or whatever, you know, what, what do you, you want? Um, by the way, that reference, was it you that asked about the master plan reference or the, yes. that's the new term for master plans, I guess. Local this, comprehensive plan? Yeah. And I don't know when the town last did a master plan. It's been a long time, hasn't it? You know, there's reluctance to do those things because they're huge and there's a lot of time and effort. And then what happens? So the only thing I'm aware of that needs to be kept updated, well, two things. One is our all hazards plan in order to get money to deal with hazardous yeah. situations, road, complete redoing roads, a bridge, whatever. Um, and the open space plan, which is a, pre a prerequisite for many grants. Right. So I don't know where the master plan stands anymore, but um, in terms of whether, Communities undertake them. It's we been a while since I've seen if that. If we have to redo the open space plan, there's only 38 people did the last one, so it shouldn't be that difficult to get it done. That's again. higher than most towns. <laughs> so. Actually, at the uh, Franklin planning meeting last Thursday, there was a woman from Boston that approves the Molly, what was her name, Michelle, maybe? or. But she was there doing some approves the open space plan. Yeah. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. I actually had in the job description that the person would be a representative to the Franklin County Planning Board. Do we have one or two reps? Do you know? Right now, just one. I've been for a few 
few years. Okay, because I thought there was a, like two positions available to Tan, so Maybe I was imagining is. that they could be the backup person, just like I seem to be that now for the Franklin Regional Council of Governments Council. So, um, so we're represented, we need to yeah. be. So thanks for going to those meetings. Yeah, you, you're good at it, you like some of the stuff they talk about. So. Yeah, a lot of it's repetitive, but, you know. Uh, well, actually, I should bring up, you know, since we, uh, any other business, uh, you sent out the email about the recreational marijuana. Pretty much, Peggy was just saying, make sure the towns have their I's dotted and their T's crossed because, you know, it's coming. And our, do, as a select, has the select board talked about the local mm -hmm. tax on it? Okay. Not what really. what yeah. happened with that? Well, we, it's up to 3%. Yeah. We know that we need to actually go to, t to have a town meeting vote to, for the tax um, for any kind of additional zoning bylaw we might want to do. Um, what was the third thing? Oh, if you want to set a cap on the number. Oh, yeah. um, we need to make those decisions. Right. And that's so what if you notice said. towns are doing moratoriums, it's such a, a wild kind of situation with the... Um, anything could almost happen before the regulations come out from the new board that was set up to oversee everything. So the recommendation is that towns have a moratorium, not to stop things unless that town wants to, um, but to give you the time to, to prepare and, and make the right decisions. So well, that's, I think the townships without anything on the books, that's what they're doing to see what the final regulations are going to be. I guess in, on Beacon Hill, it's been going back and forth um, you know, as far as the, the final law goes. Well, the law's in place. The law's, they've finally finalized they that. Have. But what is, what we're waiting for are regulations coming out of a board that was well, just the, situated. Well, the, the regulations. Yeah, yeah, and that's going to, we don't know what that's going to say. And everybody's hosting meetings and trainings and everybody come, the speakers come and say, uh, I don't know, <laughs> because it's, really brave new world, we're not really sure what's going to happen. But this is the best advice that we're getting, is that we should have a town meeting to um, e either have a moratorium until we have the real time of involved to look more closely at some zoning issues around this, in addition to what the town is already, we're ahead of a lot of other towns, as you know, because you've prepared for, for medicinal marijuana and um, with zoning. Um, but the, the tax, if we don't adopt that, we could lose that opportunity. So exactly. We need to do that. And one thing of interest, um, when when the law was being sold to the voters in the state, there was a lot of talk of education and and uh, you know rehabilitation, but none of that state tax is earmarked for any of that. It's all going straight into the general fund. Mm -hmm. So that was a little bit deceptive. Um, Just to go along with that. The, the state of Massachusetts currently gets $850 million a year from big tobacco companies, and they spend $1.2 million on prevention. Like, right. all of that money was supposed to go to prevention. Right. right. That was in the law that was passed, yeah. and, and so, it, it's been diverted. Yeah, they're not going to diverted. It's, it's, the it's not as if they, they didn't really do a bait and switch, but it was sort of sold that this is what's going to happen. Right. The regulation that they had. Right. Yeah. So it's going straight to the general fund. But the medical marijuana, it was like a percentage of their gross mm -hmm. income was supposed to come to the town. And we created an overlay district. But I think at last town meeting, there was all that money was going to be earmarked for EMS or the police department. And I was under the impression that it was going to go to the general fund and help all of us. And I was under the impression that it wasn't going to create that many situations in the community that we needed to put all that money into those two organizations. So I don't know if the well, community I think really what we wants were, it. I and think what we were told and what actually was written were two entirely different things. But also, just so you guys know, that I read in that contract, it, it, it wasn't of their gross sales. It was a percentage of their profit. And when I read that, it just kind of like, what? Because you, you can yeah. you you <laughs> can have a million dollars in sales and not make a penny in profit. Right. right. If the you CEO know. is is exactly making three million dollars. Right. Exactly. So. But you you're know. right. They're supposed to be set up as nonprofits. Yeah. Right. So how do you? <laughs> right. Well, 
It that's wasn't going to be a big impact on any of our right. yeah. agencies, and all of a sudden it's getting earmarked for these two things, and they said, well, they'd like to have it maybe where it'd be easier to keep an eye on it and stuff, but then all that money wasn't going to even help you or me or anybody in the community. Well, there's been no money. They never opened. Um, we're, we're taking a look at redoing our, that's our host agreement with the um, organization. Yeah, is, that, is that project gone down the road, the one that was on the, down by the final markdown? Did that fall through or something? Um, we're working, we're continuing to work with them. We'll see. Oh, We'll okay. see. We're really moving, we're going to see shortly whether that's going to happen. Oh. It's been a while. You know, I got questions about it. I yeah. wasn't presented when they were presenting us to, to create an overlay district. It wasn't presented in the manner they're going to use that, the income to the town. They're, and there was a big debate at town meeting about it. This year, you mean, yes. or previously? Yes. Yeah, because it had been in, an, in a revolving fund, the money, and it's not not anymore. <laughs> They're not going to make the uh, same mistakes that they made in Colorado and Washington. I don't know. I don't know what the mm -hmm. mistakes were right there. <laughs> I think the, town, I think the, the leaders want to be responsible about this and do the right thing and take care of the community. So we're staying on top of, you know, we're watching what other communities are doing and, you know, staying informed. Um, so I, I help, I'm really hoping I can help that effort. So. So I guess my question is, should yeah. we have it on our agenda for to consider location and type of recreational marijuana uses that your community would allow? Or couldn't, couldn't hurt to put it on your agenda. It says municipal officials, particularly planning boards, will likely want to conduct planning and outreach as soon as possible to determine the types of uses residents and businesses support, as well as suitable locations. What, what's that from? I mean, that's from the FERC conference. That's well, okay. which we already have. Yeah. We, that's what I'm thinking. Right. We, right. We've, we've already got that. Yes. Yeah. It, I don't know if we can regulate, but one of the things that, I mean, it, it, I've, I've made it perfectly clear, this whole marijuana thing bothers me anyways. But what bothers me even more, it, it's one thing to know that there's marijuana there and I'm not going to touch it. But it's another thing to know that they can put it into food that might be sold. And, you know, I, I, I would have no way of knowing that, you know. And so if we have the ability to regulate the marijuana being in production of any food or anything like that, that's something that um, you know I would be, you know want to stay right on top of. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we have that ability. Well, that's that. what I think the regs will address, and I think yeah. they're having hearings and they're taking input, and I think it's important to do that. And that's perhaps the kind of thing you would bring up. Well, can up. we as a township, uh, although we have the the medical and by default will be rec recreational by the sounds of it. Do we it could have be both, you know. It be, there will still, people are assuming and expecting that there will continue to be a medicinal market as well. You know, a lot of people thought, well, that's the end of that, and now we're just moving into the retail adult use um, time, but there's still a market. Because there are a lot of people who, who have prescriptions for medicinal marijuana, and that's what they want to get. They don't want to go to a retail store and buy it. But anyway, I'm sorry. Locally, do, do the voters have the option of saying, like Kip just said, we don't want edibles in town. Can, can that be a local decision or is it? it I'm not aware. That, uh, I've never heard that discussed. So I either yeah. no, <laughs> from I'm guessing no, or we'll see what the regulations address. But I'm, I'm thinking they might be able to, yeah, you know, one of the we things, don't know yet. <laughs> one of the things that I do know, since we're talking about this, is that the Department of Public Health has definitely made it clear that smoking marijuana falls into the same category as smoking tobacco. So that you can't, like in Deerfield, we have no public smoking, so you can't consume you know, pot in public the same way. Um, you know, whether or not we choose to allow um, a, a pot bar, say, where people can go in and, and Cafes, just sit and, they're calling and smoke yeah. their, you know, but then <laughs> as Board of Health, we still, you know, you can't, you can't smoke in a workplace environment. So, you know, it, it, it's even like clubs, you can't smoke in private clubs. So it, it, there's a lot of things that we don't necessarily have to be so careful about addressing. Mm -hmm. uh, but this whole thing about consumption through food is that's a whole gray area. 
you know. Not your favorite thing, I know. <laughs> yeah, I, I, and I just see I just see huge problems with that. I mean, you know, you take some a family in town if they want to make brown uh, cookies or whatever it is, and then their daughter takes them to school. Nothing. Hey, you want to have a cookie? You know, it's like I just. Well, and that's ultimately what it comes down to yeah. for me is. Yeah. The youth, the, the, yeah, I mean, exactly. that I think is something they're paying a lot of that's attention really to. really for me what it comes down to. So again, since you're interested, if I, something comes across my screen about a, uh, um, a, the commission having a meeting or a hearing and there's an opportunity to get public input, I'm happy to keep you aware of that. So. Thank you. So our next meeting will be December? December 4th. December 4th. One last quick thing off talk, to topic um, for Wendy or Kip. I got this letter, something, some trust thing for energy savings, the gets uh -huh. What I haven't received any follow up That's on that. That's because this is the energy save program through the Grinspoon. Uh, yeah. And they didn't do the follow up email they were supposed to do. Did you get so the, do I just throw the letter away? Did you, no. get the, did you get the photo of the house? No. Okay. That's the part that hasn't been done. Um, I, I received the letter, said that I was a chosen one. Whatever well, chosen. they were able to, oh, to Saint, actually. St. John? <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> I'm just I, 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 it's the waiting. curiosity factor right now. Yeah. I haven't well, what, seen it. What they did, John, just so you know, is that they drove by, they went up and down, I think, all the streets in town, but for some reason their gizmo didn't work everywhere. And they basically had a roof-mounted gizmo on the car, <laughs> and they took infrared photos of everybody's houses. Mm -hmm. And with the computer uh, generation that they have, they really can only see three sides of your house, but the computer took a, a three-dimensional picture of it, and they were supposed to send you a colored photograph mm -hmm. showing where all the heat us in your house was. It was up to the homeowners to do with that whatever they were just providing, saying, look, at this is where your house is oh, losing heat. And okay. that's all they were going to do. Uh, I brought it up here because I didn't yeah. know other how do you, people how do you get that? Gonna, I will they have just the drove energy down committee. The no, how do you get that as a they're gonna, They were supposed to send it. They're they talking to people as they run oh, it was oh, across yeah. them. But yeah. Well, yeah, but I just, they were supposed you don't to be get a follow it, follow-up letter. the way that I read it, too, that there might be some cash available for that. There's incentives for doing Okay. Okay, with that being said. Quick point of, we talked about the education part at the FERCOG on uh, November 29th is, is a session, Roles and Responsibilities of Planning Board and Zoning Board. And it's right up in Greenfield. This is, the state is doing this. So some of us said we're gonna try to go to that. It's the 29th from six to eight at the FERCOG. They often have pizza. Oh, yeah, what they kind? Often, I don't know, or health food. <laughs> they always have some kind of food. They just switched to village. It's a Wednesday, <laughs> it's a Wednesday night. Well, village so, uh, is okay. Yeah. So I'll try to send out an email to everybody okay, about Okay, yeah. That'd be good for us. Yeah, yeah it would right. be great for the ZBA the folks. Or the end? Some, there's the some new there. people to join so you. Get there. Oh, yeah. Get so there. Yeah. 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 Mayor Clarity. Can you get to go? We'll pay your mileage. Really? <laughs> Six really? miles back and forth. <laughs> okay. Anything else? Mail? Only two I, for I, me. I, I went through the mail. It's all nothing. Uh, okay, little very good. Neighboring towns, uh, too special, so. Well, time to go. Okay, John. Well, it's nine o'clock. What? Is, is that the right time? time? Is that? No. Well, it's nine o'clock. It's after nine. Yeah. Is that the right time? I'd like no, to make a motion uh, ago, that, uh, well, our next meeting will be December fourth. December, December fourth. Okay, yeah. Did we have a motion here? I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. John. I'll second the motion. Well, no, no, no. Okay. All those yeah. in favor? Aye. Aye. Five, Aye. Nothing. Okay. Five zero zero.